Turkey season has kicked in, and a recent study shows it's getting longer and stronger. Meteorologist Mike Bettis explains why pollen makes millions of Americans miserable. They don't like the heat, heat they, or the, yeah. the cold, cold, right? Very all right, sick. today is virtual vacation day. No packing, no airline flights, best of all, no money. So where will you go to relax, recharge, and rejuvenate? We picked a couple of spots here in our pandemic. So okay. before we had to go places virtual, right. it was a thing. And P.S. Fort Lauderdale, water temperature, 77. It's probably oh, nice. perfect for me. She's yeah. got to wait until it's, it's like 85. Little, yeah, 85, but I would still go in with that. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, welcome to AMHQ Early. I'm meteorologist Jordan Steele. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. Now, we go from storms to floods um, to awful allergies. Got a lot to cover this morning, so let's dive right in with a look at your top stories. You can see Reunion Tower, the Bank of America building. Um, but we've got this front here coming in. So out ahead of it, southerly flow coming back. You can see some of this moisture actually returning right across the Florida panhandle, uh, right into the Big Bend area. You've got showers and thunderstorms there. Later today, the thunderstorms that pop up here around the Arklatex and over across the Mississippi Valley from Memphis southward, these could go severe. So I want to show you what's happening. The moisture that we have across the south, that keeps returning north. We've got a front coming in and through the two, combining forces will give us that risk of showers and thunderstorms. Pretty decent low-level flow coming on in. That's going to help bring up the moisture and just add a little wind energy to the whole system. But this is not the setup that we had last week. So while there will be thunderstorms and some could be severe, it's not going to be a big outbreak like we had. Scattered thunderstorms, Memphis, it's about 3 o'clock. Nashville coming through about 10, 11 o'clock tonight. And a line coming through, strong damaging winds and, of course, more rain, Jordan, a problem for us here. Yes, that's right. And that line's going to be shifting. Watching right now in the a lot of your lawns are really soggy, though, too. And so the more, the more rain we get here, it's going to cause flood problems pretty quickly. So Nashville, Cookville, Knoxville, all in this flood watch. Johnson City, Bristol, Tennessee, where you had some flooding for campers over the weekend there who were there for in town for NASCAR. We are going to be watching for more rain coming in here. It's a widespread inch of rainfall coming your way. That's the medium green. The darker green is two to three. And we've got some chances of that as well, especially where we get repeated rounds of thunderstorms. So here's what happens. That moisture comes in, squeezes up against the front end. The front just kind of rings it all out. And so we are going to be watching for heavy rain, probably a line of storms ahead of the front, and then the front comes through with just one more batch of rain that you get out of it. So tonight's forecast is a wet one from Louisville to Lexington. We've got this big zone where we could see flash flooding. It actually extends all the way back into parts of Mississippi and then through Alabama. I mean, these are the areas we keep talking about. You guys making the headlines every week for storms. In this case, this week, it's some thunderstorms, yes, but it's just another round of rain that's going to think be your biggest problem out there. Your yards have got to be so soggy. And then and then you look what happens on Wednesday night. Yes, there is colder air coming in behind the front. And yes, that can extend all the way down to the southern Appalachians. You may mix with snow at elevation, Jordan. Say it ain't. It. I always know who writes these Star Wars scripts. All right, let's get you into the forecast here for today. Um, well, not today. This is for Wednesday night. This is this is your April Fool's weather coming your way. So Wednesday night into Thursday. Thursday, it's April 1st. We've got a forecast of 5 to 8 inches of snow, maybe even 8 to 12 when you go up at elevation here in the Adirondacks. Yep, this is the Northeast forecast. 3 to 5 across a good chunk of the New York State Thruway, down into Pennsylvania, into West Virginia, Western Maryland. It's maybe only an inch, but it's still snow that we're going to be getting. So in places like Caribou and Burlington, we snow well into April. The latest on record is into May, so this is not surprising that we're getting snow. Same thing in Buffalo and Syracuse and even Pittsburgh. Our average last snow is not till April the 7th, believe it or not. So we are not done yet and we might get some snow in Pittsburgh. So here's how it plays out. It starts as rain. This comes in on Wednesday. We see rain overspreading the entire northeast, but by Thursday morning when you wake up, the cold air has come in. We finish with snow in Pittsburgh and Punxsutawney and Scranton, Pennsylvania, Wilkes-Barre. You've all got snow coming your way. Syracuse, you as well. This is It's still snowing and likely sticking up here as we get into your Thursday afternoon. Jordan. Man, that's exciting. Meanwhile, Art is a good spot to do that. If you're just watching them from your boat or from the shore, right? Um, if you're traveling here today, here's a look at the forecast. We do have some thunderstorms early in the day. Yes, up here around Tallahassee, we've had some rumbling Jacksonville watching. Look how warm 88 degrees in Naples, Sanibel, Captiva. What a great day to hit the beach, do a little shell collecting there. Miami, we're going to be in the mid 80s, but this is your problem spot. It's raining up around Tallahassee right now. Apalachicola and Port St. Joe. We've got thunderstorms that are dropping some pretty heavy rain and Jacksonville light rain right now. Thunderstorms just off to the south and so there's going to be a bit 
bit more. We do have a boundary right across this area, I-10, so that's going to be a spot to watch here early in the day. And then we'll see some storms popping up. Here you see it pop up just north of Tampa, maybe around Hudson Beach, um, Daytona, and Orlando. We've got that chance as we get into the afternoon as well. But it's not a guarantee washout, so don't cancel your beach plans. And here's the thing. Get these forecasts coming your way weather-wise. Pittsburgh, you saw that snow in your forecast. How's it going to happen? Well, the cold air comes blasting in, so 53 degrees tomorrow morning. It's going to be so warm you don't even need a jacket. And then by Thursday morning, we're in the 20s, and we stay there overnight on Friday and Saturday. So, yeah, it gets cold. We see it all across the northeast. So here's our forecast for today. We start with temperatures in the 30s, even 40s. Not a bad day, right? DC, we're practically 70 this afternoon. Pittsburgh, same deal. Here comes the front that brings in the colder air and temperatures by overnight on Thursday really start dropping off. 26 in Detroit, 31 in Pittsburgh. Now, Boston, New York City, hang on until we get throughout the day on Thursday. But yes, you get the cold air as well. And you'll feel it by Friday morning when the temperature is below freezing and the wind chill will be in the 20s. All right, so D.C., we have a 70-degree high today with brilliant blue skies and sunshine. By Friday morning, it is going to be 30 degrees. It's going to be windy. And, Jordan, I kind of hope the blossoms aren't in full bloom at this point. Good call. Because Look at all blown I around. know, that's so true. Yeah. Anybody with sensitive plants just knows. That was windy. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us on AMHQ Early. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. And I'm meteorologist Jordan Steele. It seems now that spring has arrived. The storms just keep on coming. The South has been getting hammered lately, and that includes you guys in Memphis. Let me show you what happens here with weather in New Orleans. So I know the good times are always rolling despite the weather, but this is a tough little stretch. We've got rain showers out there today. Tonight could be thunderstorms. And then again tomorrow morning, we're still stuck in rain. And then it gets cold, 35 degrees on Wednesday night. So there's a lot happening here. Thunderstorms on the move. And by your Wednesday, we see it stretching out all across parts of the south. And this is not just a, a quick little line of thunderstorms comes in and comes out kind of deal. We're going to be in in it for quite a while through uh, the south and east. So tomorrow's forecast brings in the front. We have all this instability that builds out ahead of it. That's where we could see the possibility of severe weather. And again, like I, I said about tonight's forecast here, it's not a slam dunk big severe weather outbreak, but there will be some thunderstorms that get a little punchy. We'll have that risk for some strong damaging winds, maybe some hail. Um, there is an isolated tornado risk, so we're going to keep an eye on all of that and watching this as we get into tomorrow right along this front. So where do we have the storms tomorrow morning? Chattanooga, you start off with thunderstorms. Huntsville, again, you start off with thunderstorms. North Georgia, Blue Ridge, you start off with storms. And then your forecast throughout the day, you can see by morning, sinking south towards the Atlanta metro, upstate of South Carolina, we get into more showers, and things really get going through the afternoon. So now we've got a line of thunderstorms. These may be severe, watching across the south central part of Alabama, including around Montgomery. The Atlanta area rush hour will be tough. Head south to, to Macon and Columbia by the time we get into the dinner hour. All right. So before this forecast, look at all the snow coming into the Northeast this week. So we are talking about Wednesday overnight and a Thursday, Friday time frame. Snow, three to five inches. You're shoveling this on your driveway here across northern Pennsylvania. Look at the I-90 corridor from Buffalo to Syracuse, Rochester, Binghamton. We've got more snow. Burlington and then up in the Adirondacks, Saranac Lake, we could see more than eight to 12 inches of snowfall. So this is how it plays out. It starts as rain. It's going to be so warm today and you think, oh, there's no way it'll snow. And it doesn't at first. It rains. And then it changes over to snow as the cold air comes in. This happens overnight. So when you wake up in the morning, it is snowing. Look out the window. First thing, you'll see snowflakes. And Syracuse and Wilkes-Barre. And we're watching around Bradford, Pennsylvania. Clarion, Pennsylvania. You've got some snow coming your way. And then into your Thursday evening, it's all lifting north. The whole low pressure itself is lifting north. And it has to do with this track of the low pressure where we get the snow. We're not going to get it in New York City. We're not going to get it in Hartford or New Haven because the track of the low will go right over you. It lifts up here right across northern parts of Maine. But on the back edge of that, where the cold air comes in, you get some snowfall. So looking at first the rain, we've got rain coming in. Could be one to two inches in some spots, which would be good. There's a lot of dry areas here in the northeast. But you put rain down first, and then you put snow over top of it. It's going to be a really sloppy situation here. Oh, you just put a step right into your yard, Jordan. I'm, I'm sure to sink in. Springtime yeah. slush. Oh. Here in the Great Lakes. Yes, there's cold coming. Temperatures are going to be 
dropping again and we do have more snow coming our way. So we've got this big dip in our jet stream. And, you know, as this whole thing has been diving in, this is why it's so windy across Montana and North Dakota and South Dakota. They had to close parts of 90 and 94 because it was so windy because there was a fire threat. Um, now as we watch that front dig in, now we see the cold air come in behind it. So it's bringing another problem. Trough builds in, front comes in, cold air spills in behind it today and you're going to feel such a change temperature wise here today. It was so warm yesterday in the 60s all across the zone. Now we've got 36 degrees and you can really see where the front is because take a look at just the wind direction and the temperature right in here. You've got winds coming in either from the west or from the north and we've got the cold air blowing in out ahead of it. It's mild. Chicago 50, Bismarck 22. Yeah, there's a front in between there and yes, that front eventually does make its way through Chicago and we see the cold air blasting out over Wisconsin and Michigan and we've got the uh, temperatures really dropping as we get through the day tomorrow tomorrow night into Thursday morning to get ready for some really cold starts to the day here. And this cold air is on the move. It's not going to stay right here. So get ready for that. Winds are going to still be a factor today. Um, we still have um, some concerns for winds right across the central plains. And then we go to the cold. So we've got high wind warnings behind the front. That is a place across North and South Dakota. This wind, I know this should be wind advisory in here. It is so windy in, into Oklahoma this morning, Jordan, like 60 mile per hour winds and not with a thunderstorm. It's right. just windy. Yeah, no, just just those big old winds of high. Oh, I guess that um, makes you rest a little easier knowing all those beautiful flowers. Your planting is not affecting your pollen, but your trees are affecting you. So we've got some higher pollen amounts right across northern Texas, Oklahoma, where I just mentioned those winds blowing at like 60 miles per hour. So think about how far that pollen is getting blown. You guys are dealing with that there. The grass pollen starting to be an issue right across central Texas. Everything's greening up, right? It looks great, but you know it's causing you some sneezing and uh, runny nose issues. Um, also down around the Florida Panhandle, where we're getting some rain this morning. We are actually seeing some grass pollen starting to become an issue. Speaking of the rain, there'll be a few more showers, maybe a few thunderstorms popping today um, into tomorrow. This is your tomorrow forecast. We're watching the front and it comes in today, but really overnight tonight into tomorrow, things get a little more organized and we expect a whole big line of thunderstorms here stretching from Louisiana through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. There's going to be multiple rounds too coming in, so it's a pretty off and on wet afternoon for you in a lot of spots like in Atlanta. Um, the Raleigh area too, we get into multiple rounds of showers. Some thunderstorms possible severe it's not a big outbreak kind of situation but definitely we'll have to watch out for some bigger concerns all right let's say good morning to you soils saturated across middle tennessee it won't take a whole lot of rain to spark another round of flooding this weekend's floods nashville's worst actually since 2010 you see it in the headline of the tennessee and right here and new this morning the number of people killed in the tennessee flood has climbed to seven at least four of those deaths are linked to automobiles that were swept away Tornadoes, floods, and the pandemic, it's been a tough year for Nashville. The March 2020 outbreak produced 10 tornadoes in Tennessee and killed 25 people. Six of those deaths were in Nashville or its suburbs. Now, coming up at 940 Eastern on AMHQ, we're going to talk to Nashville homeowner Chris Cappy. He'll tell us about Nashville life when the Cumberland River is your next-door neighbor. I want to show your forecast here as well as we look at more rain coming in. It comes in tonight, so be ready for this. We've got showers and thunderstorms coming our way, and uh, we'll be talking more about that here into parts of the Tennessee Valley. We also have a big front coming in, and that's going to bring some strong winds right across portions of North Dakota into South Dakota. This front means business. Yesterday, we saw those strong south winds, right, um, and then changing over to west wind. Today, we're going to see that blast on through portions of the northern plains and into parts of the Midwest. So here comes the front. Chicago, you were 50, now you're 49. We've got some colder air that will be blowing in today, though. So enjoy the more mild temperatures that you're going to have out there today because cold air is on the move, and we're already feeling it in places like North Dakota. Steph? Well, then I would feel, <laughs> would feel that way. Uh, these winds were just so wild. There were tractor trailers blown over on the interstates like 90. They had to shut that for a while, um, 94 or two, because of the strong winds. We had issues with fire danger and either you know, red flag warnings up all over the place here and fire spreading really rapidly right around Rapid City and Mount Rushmore. Still some high wind warnings up here and now it's a northwest wind. It's blowing in the cold air. So we've got temperatures now plus wind chill making it feel like 11 below in Crosby, North Dakota. It feels like four in Bismarck. St. Cloud, Minnesota. It feels like 15. I hope you didn't get too spoiled by all this warm weather that we had recently uh, because yeah, it's, it's back to uh, not just reality, but back to below reality, right? Below average. The front 
is on the move. The front is right about here, and you can tell by the wind direction. Winds coming from the south, heading towards Chicago. That's a warm wind. We've got winds blowing from the west or northwest here into Minneapolis. That's a colder wind. So in between the two, we've got a front, and we'll have a froh pas today. Chicago, oh, enjoy those 60s. They're gone. We've got temperatures dropping into the 30s by tomorrow morning here, and warming up tomorrow, Chicago only into the low to mid 40s. That is it. We keep this cold air moving around here as we get you into your Thursday. Now, Chicago, it is really a two-day thing. Your morning temperatures really reflect the story, right? So this morning, um, not bad at all. We've actually near 50. Tomorrow morning, it'll be chilly, 34 degrees. But then Thursday and Friday, we are in the 20s. Then we're back up here into the 40s and 50s, which, is, by the way, is above average. Our average low is 34 right now. Stuff. Everyone's over it, though. I I'm so. pretty sure everyone. Trees went down, too. So the yeah, that was, get, that like, was all serious tangled. Wind. It was serious. All right, glad that you're here with us on AMHQ on this Tuesday morning. And at first glance, you might think that this is smoke blowing off of these cedar trees in Tennessee. Uh, nope. Those hazy clouds springing forth from the evergreens are huge puffs of pollen. We'll explain why pollen dust can make your spring so miserable. Well, who's disappointed actually now that it's moving? Because that was such a fun thing to watch, right? All of us coming together to see this this boat. I'm yeah. very happy it's moving. You're happy it's moving. Yeah. <laughs> Nine billion dollars yeah. a day yeah. from, from, from a money perspective. And yes. want to make sure we all get, you know, our toilet paper and paper towels and Please, everything. Let's else. not have a toilet paper thing yes, again. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it was weather related though to get it out. Yes. The, the high tide played a role, the full moon, right? Um, let's talk more about weather today and how this might be affecting your travel here and actually slowing you down. We've got some rain out there this morning. We've seen it already in Tallahassee. Thunderstorms down through Apalachicola and Port St. Joe. They're moving out here. It was actually much rainier earlier, right across the entire part of St. George Island. Now we've got rain now just south of Tallahassee. A couple of showers in Jacksonville, but pretty light at the moment. Roads are wet. It's kind of nice sleeping rain, right? So if you can sleep in this morning, Morning. Keep the weather channel on. Just enjoy the sound of the rain. Maybe you don't have to drive so early. Now, we do have a few more showers that, that will pop across this area and maybe even down through Tampa, Ocala, Gainesville. We could have thunderstorms and Jacksonville another round. This could really uh, slow travel right around the dinner hour on I-75. So we go from rain and storms to a different kind of coating. The color of blue. Exactly. Right. Okay. Well, this is purple, right? <laughs> Periwinkle? Yes. This is purple. Oh, this here we go. Purple. That is not purple. My You're dress is blue. not. Steph's is not. Jim's jacket is not. But anyway, <laughs> we've had a blue discussion Good. all morning. This is Good. definitely purple. All right. So, so we've got the wind advisory in purple out there today. And then on the map, the blue actually is where we have some of the stronger winds. The strongest of the winds, though, coming in from the northwest. Bismarck, Rapid City. And those colors actually highlighted in the bright pinks here. The winds today are going to be a factor for travel. Like they were yesterday, not as bad as yesterday. We had winds over 60, 70 miles per hour. Today we're going to see 35, 40, maybe gusting to 50. That's going to be the challenge. But it's going to be a strong south wind out ahead of the front and a strong west or northwest wind behind it. So be careful driving. The big tractor trailers again here, they're going to be susceptible to some of this wind. Steph and Jim. All right, spring. Overwhelming damage in Centerville, Alabama, where survey teams just wrapped up their examination. The track of the tornado over 80 miles long. And according to the National Weather Service Birmingham tornado summary, quote, it's impossible to know the exact number, but to put it in perspective, tens and tens of thousands of trees were snapped or uprooted, as you can see in this drone video. Yeah, it, it's hard to even imagine here. So let's talk about the damage track. From this, of, of course, many tornadoes uh, that hit. Yeah. And uh, this one was rated an EF3. Of course, that has to do with what exactly it ran into, and unfortunately, right. there was numerous homes. Numerous homes that were affected. Peak winds at 150 miles per hour. The tornado changed intensity throughout its track, but that was the, the peak. It was on the ground for 80 miles, in fact, more than 80 miles, and its maximum width, it was more than a mile wide. Yeah, really, really tough. Yeah. So here's a look at just an miles. example of how far 80 miles is. This is as a crow fry, right? You go from the Liberty Bell to Freedom Tower, 79.7 Five miles. I mean, that's. I mean, Can you imagine a, a tornado, tornado on the ground for that, that long? And these were some long track storms here. It's the same as Chicago to Milwaukee, right? That's a long Sheesh. distance that this storm, the supercell was on the ground with a tornado the entire way. Yeah, and if, as we were yeah. mentioning, that wasn't the only one. We have that EF4 that was in Georgia, and we had numerous, actually, EF3 yeah. and EF2 tornadoes. Mm -hmm. All right, so today's threat, we do have the risk of thunderstorms again. And Steph, you know, there's an isolated risk of tornadoes, but mainly hail and wind. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, that goes from Nashville. That doesn't 
doesn't need it anymore, you know, all the way over the Mississippi River to where you are right. in the Southern Plains. Right. So let's time it out, Jim, and talk about the threats here. And look, it's, it's March, so there will be that risk of severe. Yeah, I mean... It's like Nashville, like you're mentioning, yeah. that means that we can have flash flooding. The flash flood guidance shows one to two inches of rain in one hour could cause flash flooding. So there's a flash flood watch this evening into late Wednesday for that one to two inches. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you just received seven, eight inches of rain, twice a month's worth of rainfall in a matter of a day or two, one to two inches is a lot of rain. Here's another interesting thing. If you live along the Gulf Coast, I'm sorry. I know it's going to be rainy. I know it's raining already, already this morning here uh, around Florida. I know it's spring break for a lot of people. But this boundary is actually going to be rising back up and meeting up with our big trough that's coming in, our big moneymaker, if you will, uh, for the snow, the cold that really so many of us are going to be feeling. So there's that boundary. There are your showers and storms and some cloudy conditions. That's going to start rising northbound and bringing more rain for some of us. So here along the I-10 corridor, the capital of Florida. What is it? Tallahassee. Oh, so we take you into Lake City. That's really where you head down towards Gainesville. Of course, big rivals there. Tallahassee, actually, FSU just getting knocked out, right, of the um, of March Madness. So they made it pretty far. Oh, no. Um, were you saying, was that in your I had, bracket? I had them winning. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, you're busted. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so this boundary is going to be going northbound here. Michigan's still in it, so uh, go blue. So there's our front. The you see it coming in? Okay. Meeting up with that warmer, moist air coming in. A little bit of a low-level flow bringing in some of that moisture and some of those stronger winds, so you could have some pops of thunder. Um, that wind is what really enhances these thunderstorms, so it's key to look at those. And as we go through tonight, that's where we do have the possibility of some stronger storms. And then, Jen, eventually it makes its way into Nashville this evening. Yeah, and that's a real concern, right? What is over it. Now, the big temperature swing in the northeast is going to occur as well. Spring in the beginning of the week in Pittsburgh, and then towards the end of the week, it's going to be back into winter. We're talking about more than a 40 degree dip. So let's talk about our forecast here, not only for places like Pittsburgh, but the rest of the Northeast and who's going to be getting what. So here's your overall story into Pittsburgh. 72 degrees. Are you kidding me? 72 degrees here. Well above average, right? Our average is 55. We drop back down closer to that. Then we're below average for a Thursday and Friday, but at least it's a quick turnaround. It's not like we're going to be waiting there forever like we were with the Suez Canal, right? This is a, just a quick one and done here. Pittsburgh, um, how about our low temperatures? Those are going to dip down into the 20s. That means it's cold enough to support snow, but is there going to be any moisture in place? We'll have a look at that, too. So there you go. Through this afternoon, you see a lot of yellow, a lot of orange on the map. Holy front coming. There it is. I mean, you can see it, right? There's your frontal passage. We like to go fropa when we have that front coming through, and you can see that cooler air getting in for our Thursday really dives in for our Friday morning with the 20s here for some of us. And yes, there will be snow. Lots of it for some of you. We're going to be near record, near record setting lows here, especially Binghamton. We could tie our record of 19. So Washington, D.C., what are we going to see? A high today of 30, Friday morning, 30 degrees. That is a 40 degree temperature difference in a super short period of time. How about Buffalo, New York? What are you going to be dealing with? Well, we're one of those spots that is going to be back west towards the Great Lakes. So this is the area where we could be getting actually maybe a little bit of snow. Let's look at our forecast here and show you that it's 71. Then we drop down to 55, 34 degrees and light snow as we head into our Thursday. I think there's a double thumb down forecast for that. And then finally, at least we return to the sunshine, the warmth, the 40s and 50s as we head into our Friday and also into our Saturday. So it's a quick shot of snow. Sadly, you know, Jim, we need a lot more than just some light snow falling here in Buffalo to make up our deficit. Uh, you should see Syracuse. That too. We don't have allergies from that big pollen that right, you can the see. Dust. The dust. It's the little ones, the microscopic ones see. that you cannot see. And as you saw, spring allergy season has certainly kicked into gear, especially in the south. Meteorologist Mike Bettis explains why pollen makes millions of Americans miserable. That it is. Facts are facts. Uh, so facts are facts. <laughs> Let's talk about the pollen. And, you know, kind of like with thunderstorms, Oof. when you see red on the map, Abrams. It's not good. Not good. Red light stop. It's not good. The trees Too are much. exploding here along the I-10, I-20 quarter. Grass also kicking up a storm as well. Coming up north, uh, we will have some rain to wash some of that out, which but is a little then, bit of a misnomer because usually it comes roaring back after the rain um, and some cooler temperatures, which will kind of keep it at bay a little bit. That Pretty strong cold front.
Uh, very strong cold front, I would say, getting all the way down even actually into Florida. Yeah, yeah. We are going to see our temperatures. Look at this below average 10 to 25 degrees. This is why you can never sleep on March Ever. early or late or even early April for that. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's going to be April Fool's. <laughs> April Fool's. Well that is, this is no April Fool's joke, this by the is, way. No. This is a real cold front. We're not just doing this to set it up. Uh, and we will see record lows. So it's hard to go from what we've had, yeah. the warmth, the humid. You see everything budding out in the south yeah. to all of a sudden, whoosh, that's it. So here's the thing. Notice places like Atlanta, Charlotte, know, Montgomery. Our temperatures are going to be hot starting the day and going into the afternoon. But as, when you finish work, you're yeah. going to need a jacket in some places. Yeah, you're bringing in the pile. Exactly. Going into work. Going, exactly. Just to make sure you're, you're, you're covered. Uh, going on into, let's see, Friday. Thursday uh, and Friday. Or Thursday afternoon. It's a cold day. That's the thing, too. It's going to be so windy, the temperatures aren't going to rise that much. Yeah. But they will drop like a rock when the winds die down on Friday or Thursday night. Yes, right? they will. A little radi radiational cooling there with all that uh, dry, time. clear air. So get ready for that cold air. Record-setting 20s potentially. Probably behind this front. Not only in the south, considerably, but also in the northeast. Yes. Remember that the huge polar plunge we had in Texas, everything went straight south. None of it got into the northeast. Right, that's true. This is different. This is spreading out all of its tentacles here. And with moisture and cold air combined, you know what that translates to? Snow. We are going to get it into the northeast. Look at Minneapolis tonight into the 20s, Chicago into the 30s. Everything pushes eastbound. So our Wednesday is going to show really by the afternoon the entire northeast in the rain. But once that cold air gets in, ah, voila, there's your snow coming in. Buffalo, Syracuse, a lot of these places seeing three, four feet below average, not inches, feet below average. Pittsburgh's above average by almost 16 inches or something. So we're good to go there. But are we going to make up all this snow that we've been missing out on, it doesn't look like it. We are going to see big totals. Some of us could see over a foot, but I don't think we're going to wipe out our deficit here of three to four feet. One to two inches of rain for us here into the northeast. And again, we will see that snow uh, coming down into uh, the northern portions. But Buff Boston, I should say, it's going to be a rain event for you. Look at your temperatures dropping Thursday night. Burlington, you get in on the snow. And notice our temperatures go from the 60s Wednesday. And then as we had Thursday night, Friday morning, we're only into the 20s. A massive drop here for really, Jen, the whole, you know, plains of the eastern half of the country. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, Steph, it affects so many people here. A big trough, pretty big trough actually coming into the yeah. Northwest. Can you believe the really wind and the is. fires uh, actually I'm, in Mount Rushmore right I know, now? Closing I know. down Mount Rushmore? Yeah. That's crazy. It is, especially this time of year, too. Uh -huh. You know, you think of that a little bit later in the season. But we have all this wind here and dry conditions. And so you have to watch out for those winds gusting 50, 60 miles an hour for us with this system. We can show that to you. And there's a look at our low pressure. See, there's a high to the east, a low in the center, and a high to the west. And the closer these are together, the breezier it is because all that wind has got to fit through a smaller area. So it's going to be coming on through and blasting through. Look as we head through the day. Winds are still going to kick up. They are going to tick up for us here. So if you're driving over, you know, any high bridges, if you're flying, you're going to feel that turbulence here. And, you know, it starts to die down a little bit as we head into our Wednesday and everything starts moving east. Jim. All right, 17 years ago. 500-year flood. What exactly does that mean? It's, it's confusing. I have to admit, I, I do find it confusing. I understand why it is confusing for a lot of people. So we want to explain exactly what a 500-year flood is. So it doesn't mean that the water is going to get that high every 500 years. What it actually means, it's a percentage chance that you're going to get that much rainfall, a certain amount of rainfall in a certain amount of time, and that's every year. So there is a 0.2% chance every year that you could see a 500 year flood. This flood was technically a 100 year flood. Again, has to do with how much rain falls in a certain amount of time. And so it was determined that this was a 100 year flood. So it's a one in 100 chance or 1% chance of observing this type of rainfall any given year. So keep that in mind. You could see these year after year after year. Let's talk about the rainfall that we are going to be seeing here in the southeast because unfortunately we're going to get more of it. And this is what we've seen just over the past seven days. We have seen two times what we typically get for the entire month of March in a matter of two days. Some places it's been a little bit more than that, but it's been excessive. And with that said, look at this. It is our fourth wettest day of all time in Nashville of any month of any year, March 27th, 
was our fourth wettest day with 5.75 inches. With all that moisture on the ground, you do not need a lot in order to get flooding. In fact, there is a flash flood watch we'll show you here that goes into effect tonight because all you need is one to two inches of rain in one hour in order to get flash flooding. And we most certainly could see that. So that's where we have our flash flood watches posted anywhere you see the green. And so you really need to be aware when this rain comes through. The rain is going to be coming through as we head early into the mornings here in Nashville. Um, late tonight, I should say, into early Wednesday morning. That's when we will see our heaviest rain coming in. And that's when we have, unfortunately, the best chance for that flash flooding, Jim, will be occurring here. Look at that early Wednesday morning when a lot of people will be sleeping. So that leaves me a little on edge. Right, this is the last thing they need, frankly. But uh, expect some drier days.